Hello everyone, this is Daniel and welcome back to another part in this character modeling tutorial series. So here we are back and we need to do our UV layout. Now I've been looking for, you know, the best way of doing this in Blender and even looked a bit ahead at uh, normal map, baking and these sort of things. And I'm very sorry to say that I just can't find a really good way of doing it in Blender. Um, I really tried hard to do everything in Blender, but I must admit that for the UV layout in such a complex case and um, the baking as well, it it just it just isn't <laughs> going to be. It would be a huge pain. Let's put it that way. So it is not impossible. So if you don't have any tools and you don't want to spend any money on this, um, it is not difficult to learn how to do it. Um, I encourage you to go and look for some other tutorials where you can learn it. But I will show you a way uh, with a few tools that I like to use. And the first one that we'll be using now is going to be uh, UV Pack Master. Uh, you can buy it on Gumroad. It looks like this. Um, it's not too expensive, really. There's a standard version as well. Although I believe we will be needing um, some of the pro features, so I'm not too sure if that's good for you. But honestly, it's really cheap. Uh, I'm sorry to do this to you, <laughs> but um, I can't. <laughs> I just can't do it without. It would just take so much time. So basically, you download that, follow the instruction there, install it, and I have it now here. Um, and I'll show you how to use it. So. Uh, let's get started. First of all, let's go into into this. Actually, I need to separate these out a little bit still um, because I need to see what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, we have no no more intersections, it seems. So I just did that so that I can easily select everything. Uh, and by the way, here's the first little feature that we can use from this plugin. We can quickly hit uh, overlap check and it highlights everything that's overlapping. And this here seems to be the only thing that is in our way. <laughs> so let's do that again. Oh, actually, we need to select it all before we do it. Yeah, these are of course overlapping because we have multiple things stacked on top of each other. But here, maybe we don't want this to overlap. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's, it will be recalculated later anyway. But actually, it helps us to see quickly the couple of parts that we need to look at because we need to set some settings for this. Uh, in the options now, I mean, basically, let me tell you first what this plugin basically does. It does very good UV layouts like this. One click solution, everything nice, perfect. <laughs> But um, we can do a bit better because now it still separates the UV islands for the fingers. So these are not stacked anymore. So the fingers are all separate here. Um, so we want to avoid that. And I've actually ended up... Should we really stack the thumb on? I think we should not stack the thumb onto the rest after all. I'm just taking this off here. Uh, so for the fingers, we need to group them together so that they're kind of calculated as if they're one island. So we will use the lock groups. We'll go to number one and assign that to lock group number one. This, this part is also stacked. So once again, we'll go here and assign that to uh, lock group number two in this case. Actually, I believe we will be getting artifacts here from that, <laughs> but uh, it's okay. No, actually, we should be fine. Uh, we have to be a bit careful when baking, but actually, I think we'll get away. Um, then here, this part is also a group of stacked islands, so we'll set that to group three, and uh, there was one more part where here we have, I believe, these both are stacked, so we'll take this one, put that to group four, and this here, let's make sure it's all selected. We'll put that to lock group five. And just by doing that uh, already, um, let's select it all, let's pack it again. And we should see that the fingers are now still stacked. 
if we do overlap check on this all the ones that we set to groups should still be stacked together just like that so that's good let's undo that quickly so we're back to this view and um, see if there are a few more options that we can set um, one thing that I want to do at this point is to um, quickly set a texture um, we will create a new texture call this test 1024 by 1024 is good we'll set that to uh, UV grid um, and hit OK now I believe the only way to get this now to display is to uh, basically clear all the materials that we have <laughs> and we'll just do that now uh, sooner or later we would have done it anyway just make sure we have no materials on these um, let's remove all these material slots um, probably there's a quicker way of doing this <laughs> but anyway let's do it just individually since the issue is that if, if you have like geometry assigned to a slot that's like not the first and you transfer the material um, there's a it's likely that it won't end up on the right assigned to the correct slot so I we'll have to do it this way uh, alright there we go now we'll assign a new material preview onto something select everything control L and then uh, link materials so now they have all the same material and we'll go to the surface and for the base color we'll set an image texture and select here the test image that we have and now we can easily see um, sort of the scale of our UVs and one more thing because it's now now the wireframe is in the way so I'm going with everything selected I'm going here to the object properties disable wireframe and then right click on it and copy to select it now it will be just the texture basically now let's select it all go back into this edit mode and with this all selected uh, I think we'll be able to get started in a second um, yeah, basically one more option uh, well first of all I like to enable this feature uh, it allows us to I don't even know what this is <laughs> Well, we can compare it in a second and see what gives us the best results. But this is a bit of a more advanced calculation method, um, so we get the best result out of our out of our texture. Uh, also, in our basic options, uh, now that's not it. In advanced options, I think we should check normalize islands. Then it will normalize the size so that um, yeah, the text resolution should be the same in all of these regions. So with all this set, select everything and let's try to pack our UVs. <laughs> and this is now going to basically keep running and try to improve the efficiency of our uh, pack. And you can hear probably my my uh, computer in the background being really noisy. But yeah, you can stop it at any time and you'll see that now it's not really improving much anymore, just like a little bit. So. Um, totally fine to stop it at this point. Let's, let's see for a second if it can do any better. But that's good. Alright, there we go. So 83% uh, of our texture are filled. Um, I've already noticed that for some reason it, it ends up giving the helmet a bit more uh, UV space than necessary and I have a feeling that it has something to do with the scale factor here. So what I want, what we need to do is select it all, hit Control A, and then uh, apply the scale. And while we're at it, no, actually, let's leave it. <coughs> apply just the scale, and we need to do this process one more time. Uh, this time, I'm just curious. Under packing device, uh, I have the option to use my graphics card for that. Uh, just in case, let me save this here, just so that we don't lose any progress in case it crashes. But let's try this again. Let's pack it and see if that goes any faster. And maybe I'm imagining things, but I feel like that's faster. <laughs> and also the, the UV size now seems to be more 
even. So I feel like we solved our issue there that we had before. But on the other hand, I believe because the size of things is now a bit less convenient, we're getting uh, slightly less um, out of our texture. We're currently at 77%, or almost 78. Would be nice if we reached 80%, but um, that is pretty much normal uh, for UVs. I think this is a pretty good number already. And just out of curiosity now, I haven't tried this actually, but let me just try to check this and see if we get anything more than that. <laughs> So, um, it's definitely taking longer now, it seems to be taking a lot longer, <laughs> and we're roughly the same. Alright, you know what, I think um, this is not really getting anywhere. It was a little interesting experiment, let's undo that, uh, we can measure the area one more time. We're back to our 78% is pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at our UVs here. You see the distribution is very nice. Uh, these areas are of course of course mirrored. Otherwise uh, it's all very very evenly distributed and I think we're done. <laughs> so um, I, I hope that through this demonstration you understand why I insisted on using this add-on. This is just something I couldn't have done manually and it would have taken more than an hour and honestly if it's just 30 US dollars um, I think that is really an hourly salary of, <laughs> of an artist not even I mean even less probably half an hour of work of worth so I definitely suggest you invest a little bit in tools like this they're very very useful and you'll have them forever and we're good to go so um, so we have everything packed now. I mean, you know, it's not uh, it's not a UDIM workflow. It's not super high resolution, but we're only using this really for a normal map um, and a bit of color. We could take double of the resolution, but anyway, what we need to do next is just to fix our naming, uh, object names, and things like that. Um, and we'll do that here quickly. Uh, basically we just need to align the names and uh, have high or low at the end um, just to clear things up. And the cape, we won't really need this for the time being, so I'm, well, let's move it to trash. <laughs> it's not really a trash, but yeah, <laughs> it's okay. So um, basically this is fingers low, this is fingers high, just like that. Then here we have the hand high and this should be hand low. Most of these I have already named conveniently, so we just need to fix the few that we forgot. Arm high, arm low, elbow high, elbow low, upper body high, upper body low. Wow, I'm proud of myself here. <laughs> uh, ring zero too high, ring zero too low. Ring zero one high, ring zero one low. Then we have hair two low, hair zero two high. Um, then we have hair zero four. This is probably the high version. And here we have the low version. This is again the high one and low one last time and low. Then we have ear low uh, and ear high, helmet, uh, can we do this, low and helmet high. <laughs> Lots of parts I don't even know what to call. This is the feet low and we will have to rename this to feet high uh, with an H at the end. Then this is going to be, um, which one is it? Oh, this is the entire part. Okay, we'll have to split this up a little bit. 
So this is going to be the leg low, and we have to split this up. Uh, take these two out for starters, and we'll call this uh, leg high. Leg high and leg low. Then we have here um, <laughs> ankle zero one high. Let's copy that. Oh, we call that ankle block. <laughs> well, let's change the name. Zero one low. Then this is going to be called ankle zero two high, and this is going to be ankle zero two low. Uh, did I name this all correctly? Ankle zero one. Okay, this is good. Almost there. Uh, this is I don't know. Leg strap. Uh, high. This is the same with low at the end. Oh, this is not good. Uh, like strap high without that. What's this? Oh, this is right. Um, okay. This is nice and clean. Um, so we can call that uh, lower body high and here we'll call it oh lower body low it's already set to the right name here we have the badge low badge high detail zero two low detail zero two high detail zero one low Till zero one high. Finally, we have here. I don't know what this is even. Uh, detail, I mean. Detail zero three um, high, I believe. Yes. Oh, we still have modifier on this. <laughs> Let's apply the modifier here. Uh, height the high resolution one and then we will name this one um, what was it detail zero three low like this and finally we have um, button just in case we have others add zero one high and this is going to be low that should be all the parts. Uh, let's unhide everything. So we have um, 24 objects here, and we should have 24 objects here. And now we have a clean set of two objects every single time. Now I'm saving this here once, and here is something we need to now consider. Well, I'll think about the details in that regard, but pretty much we're done with the UV layout. We have our low poly mesh ready to be baked. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to bake the normal map. And once again, I'm very sorry, but I will be using a different tool. Uh, I just am not satisfied with what Blender has to offer. There are many, many um, tools out there. I mean tutorials out there that show you how to do it in Blender. Uh, you can definitely try it, but I'm pretty sure you'll get some artifacts. Uh, and I don't really have a solution for those kind of issues since uh, pretty much I don't think there will be any. <laughs> for at least a couple of things that are difficult to deal with. Anyway, I, I will be using one application that I have, um, but I'll just introduce that and talk about that all later. So with that said, uh, thank you all for watching. We're very, very far now in this series, almost done. And we'll just finish off the texture baking in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.